So we're going to find a polynomial of degree 3 with zeros 2i and 5. So let's find a polynomial of degree 3 with real coefficients. Let's say that too. So we want a polynomial with real coefficients. It's degree 3 and we know two of the zeros. Okay. If it's degree 3, how many zeros will I have? Three. three. And if it's over the complex numbers, that's okay, right? Because this one obviously is a complex number, 2i. Okay. If I include the complex numbers, I will have as many zeros as my degree is, right? Okay. So I've only listed two zeros here. Do you know another zero? We wrote a whole bunch of theorems last class. One of them was called the conjugate pairs theorem. See if you can find that one. Conjugate pairs theorem. Okay. So that says if you have a zero a plus bi, then it's conjugate a minus bi is also a zero. Right. So what else do I know is a zero here? And this part is by that conjugate pairs theorem. So if a plus bi is a zero, a minus bi is a zero. So now do you see I have three zeros? Right? And what's the degree? Three. So I have all the ones I need. Now I need to expand it out. So I write it as factors. How? And then we're going to expand it out, right? Talk to me about the first one. What kind of, if I look at the um, first set of parentheses and the second, if I combine those, what will I get? A squared, a squared minus B squared, right? It's a difference of two squares. Okay. So I get X squared minus 4I squared, like this in the first one. Difference of two squares. You can actually foil it out. You're going to see that the middle terms are going to cancel, right? Is that okay? But what is I squared? So this is X squared, X squared plus four times X minus five. I get X squared, X cubed rather. X cubed minus five X squared plus four X minus 20, check me. Is that right? Let's do one more very quickly. Let's just call that A then. What if I say, um, suppose P is of degree three with zeros, I don't know, let's see. and let's say 2 minus i and, and the coefficients are real. What are the zeros? Two plus i for the same reason as before. If I have um, a complex root, then its conjugate is also a root. If the p of x is, um, has, is a polynomial with real coefficients. 
Okay, so we do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and put the um, complex ones kind of together. So, okay, when I write this as a factor, how do I write it? Okay, here I said if this is 3, if the 0 is 3, that means it's x minus 3, right? So if the 0 is 2 minus i, that's x minus the 0, right? Yeah. Have to put it in parentheses? Okay. Y'all see that? As always, if c is a 0, x minus c is the root. So we're going to put it in parentheses and distribute. Am I okay? So this is x minus 2 plus i if I distribute, right? And x minus 2 minus i, check me. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and combine these first. Because for the same reason up here, they're going to they're going to combine nicely because they were conjugates, right? Okay, but I want to point out something. I want you to look right here, and I want you to look, let me get a different color, right here. Do you see I still have a difference of two squares? X minus 2 is my first term, it's in both. I is my second term, it's in both. And there's a sign in the middle, one's a positive, one's a negative. So do you see that these guys are still a minus b, or this, I guess this one's a plus b, times a minus b? And I know that's true. Y'all see that? If you don't recognize that, you can expand it out and take you a little longer. But if you recognize these two right here are the same, and this back one is the same, this is b, and this one is a. Right? So if I expand it out, I'm going to open a bracket. That means I take A and I square it. Well, that means X minus 2, X minus two all squared. I'm going to write it like this for just a minute. X minus 2, all squared. Do you all see that? And then I put what in the middle? Minus, and I take the back one and I do what to it? Square it like that. Check, is that right? Is that okay? Okay. So I'm going to keep this x minus 3 out here for a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to expand this out. Remember that a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Or you can write it side by side and foil it. Do not just square the first term and the second term. Right? You have three terms if you square it. So x squared minus 4x plus Four, right? And what is I squared? Negative one. So this is minus negative one becomes plus one. Plus one. Everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is x squared minus four x plus five, right? Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit. Now what do we do? We're going to distribute all this. So this will be x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x. I took this x times every single term in the back, right? Now I'm going to take this negative 3 times every single term right here. So minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 15. Check me. Is that okay? x cubed minus 7x squared plus 17x minus 15. That is one polynomial. If it said find any, you can write this one or you can write your favorite number times all the terms here. Right? Another, another poly would be I don't know, maybe 2x cubed minus 14x squared plus, what, 34x minus 
30. I don't know. Whatever, right? Does that make sense? Maybe I have P of X equals negative X cubed plus 7X squared minus 17X plus 15. I can take any constant and multiply through, and I still get the same zeros. 